Hello and welcome to this, the first lesson of a unit on the environment and the atmosphere. Uh, this unit is part of AQA's um, chemistry course. It is covered in the double award as well as the triple award and it is common content. So this is fine for both triple and double students, combined science and triple science. If you've been engaging with the content via um, Edmodo or any of my other platforms, the, you will know there were some sort of pre-questions set to have a think about. So let's have a little look at those now. Hello, this is me in the corner. Uh, so the questions that we talked about or that I set uh, for you to have a think about were, how did the earth come to be the way it is today? Has it always been this way? And what events have sort of shaped our planet and the way that it is at the minute, whether that be uh, just the structure of the ground, the mountains and things like that, or in terms of the atmosphere itself. Now, over time, things have changed a lot. And actually, with the current climate, we're finding things changing a lot more rapidly than they ever used to. We'll have a look at that later on in this unit. Feel free if you are engaging with any of this through the Edmodo platform. When I pop up the questions like this on the uh, this sort of yellow screen there, uh, feel free to put answers, put suggestions, see what you think. If I like them, I'll give them thumbs up. Uh, if we're still using achievement points from school, I'll give some achievement points. Okie dokie. So when we're talking about the atmosphere and the history of the atmosphere, um, what did it actually look like? Well, did it look like this. Now this is certainly uh, one theory of what our Earth was like millions of years ago. This is what we call a creationist theory. Now creationist theories are tend to come from religious points of view and religious beliefs may come from religious texts. This representation here is a representation of the Christian creationism theory of the Garden of Eden. So in the garden, even there were plants, there were animals, uh, there were humans, and they were all living together uh, simultaneously. My purpose here as a chemistry teacher is not to tell you what you should and shouldn't believe in. If you are a follower of the Christian faith and you believe in this theory, it's absolutely superb. And you know what? Fair play to you. There are all sorts of different creationist theories and having faith is a very important thing for a lot of people. All that I'm going to talk about today is what we have evidence for. Now, unfortunately, there is not a lot of evidence to suggest that the creationism theory is actually true, but there are some little bits there. We're not going to go exactly into every single piece of evidence. I'm just going to show you a few theories. There are other creationist theories. For example, um, there was one that I read about where I think it was the Buddhist religion. I'm not entirely sure. If anyone knows, please do correct me on it. Uh, where there was an egg and the egg cracked and the one part of the earth, uh, one part of the egg went up and formed the sky and the other formed the earth. There are different religions where there are gods that are creators and destroyers and maintainers. There are all sorts of creationist theories. So I'm not going to be talking really much more about the creationist theories. So let's look at what other theories there might be and how the atmosphere and the earth might have been millions of years ago from another point of view. Would there have been dinosaurs? Now dinosaurs we do have evidence for. We have seen fossils. So there is some evidence to suggest that a long time ago there were giant reptiles living on the earth called dinosaurs. And based on the decomposition that those animals had and the fact that those animals clearly lived for some period of time, it is safe to assume um, that there were there was plant life and indeed water present at this time. But I'm going to go back even further than that. This picture here represents plants. Did the earth millions of years ago just have plants and no organisms, no, no animal based organisms, I should say. Or are we going even earlier than that? Are we going to the ice age? No living things there at all. We've just got volcanic activity and water. Or should we look at the other planets? The other planets where there's magma, where there's volcano, just masses of rocks, including super cooled rocks. 
Well, when we're talking about how the atmosphere came to be the way it is today, we're looking at somewhere in the time, or at least we're going to start the story, somewhere between here and here. So, what we're going to do, you are going to be given some information. The information is in uh, varying different sources. Some of them are YouTube videos, some of them are um, worksheets. Um, it is up to you how you choose to use them. Uh, if you're one of my students, the worksheets will be passed to you via Edmodo. Um, if you are not one of my students or if you are a teacher wanting to know where I'm going to get these from, um, head over onto TES, that's the Times Educational Supplement website, uh, and I have a page there called Miss KCAT Resources. Uh, I'll put a little tag at the end of this video so you can get to that nice and quickly. The task. Using the information that I'm going to send you over, you need to make a timeline or storyboard of how the atmosphere has changed over time. I don't necessarily mind which format this is in. Uh, you have a bit of creative freedom there. You do it as you see fit. But you do need to include, so these points are mentioned on the AQA GCSE chemistry specification. You do have to have an understand an understanding of the composition of the atmosphere at various different points, i.e. what gases are present when we start the journey of the atmosphere and what gases are present today. You also need to understand the contribution of volcanic eruptions to the atmosphere. What did they give off? What did they absorb? How, how do they impact the atmosphere and the early Earth? At some point, life did arrive on Earth. Now, again, there are various theories as to how that life arrived, um, but the theory I'd like you to do a little bit of research for is called the primordial soup theory. In addition to that, once we've got that, what I'd like you to do is have a look how plants and animals have contributed to the atmosphere and how they might have changed what the atmosphere is today. Those storylines or uh, those timelines or storyboards, uh, as I said before, can take a number of different formats. Uh, here's one that we've used in the past. So what people have done has got a great big page of A4 paper. Um, they've folded it. They've folded it in half down the middle, and then in half again and then in half again and you open up the paper and it's given you eight quadrants and then what people do is do, draw a little picture in the quadrants or whatever it may be and then maybe put number one oh that's a number one believe it or not and then write a description down here of at this time the atmosphere was like whatever Or, if you have space, you're very welcome to write the information in a little bit at the bottom here. Blah, 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 blah. There's the information. Um, but equally, don't feel like you have to do it in this format. Do whatever format you, you choose. Uh, you have creative freedom there. Here's some websites. I will link these at the end of the videos. There's some YouTube clips that are really helpful. Uh, and yeah, your ho homework or all works homework now, I suppose, uh, is to complete this storyboard and add any extra juicy bits of detail that you can. So that's what I'd like you to do. Um, have a look through that information and create yourself a storyboard on how the atmosphere has come to be the way it is today. To show and share your work, uh, feel free, my students, to send me a copy via Edmodo. I can have a look. I can suggest some improvements there. Um, Anybody else, if you want to share it on the YouTube channel or uh, on my Facebook page, the Facebook page is again Miss KCAT Resources. I can get you a little link to that again at the end of this video. For my own students, there will be a quiz at the end of this week based on this content. The quid quiz will be delivered via Edmodo and will come up on your notifications. On Friday, I am planning to make a review lesson of this so I can show you what a great example of one of these storyboards might be and what details you should have included. This will be a great opportunity for you to check your own work and actually make some improvements as you go. As we do in lessons, feel free to improve it in blue pen so you can see how you have improved. 
When it comes to recording your work, I would strongly advise still printing out the work and putting it with your folder, okay, or in your book, depending on uh, how you'd like it to be done. So in your folder or in your book and keep it. This content is on the GCSE exams. So year 10s and year 9s, as far as we know, your year 11 exams should be going ahead. We don't know what's going to happen in the future, but for now, we're just going to crack on with some really cool chemistry. That's it for now, ladies, gents, girls, boys and others. I hope you're having a lovely day, keeping each other safe and washing those hands. Stay indoors. Have a lovely time. Bye bye.